It's time to take a look inside ECSU Mighty Vikings football. <laughs> Welcome to Viking Coaches Show with Marcus Hilliard on WRVS 89.9. Right back here for you, ready to take you inside Mighty Vikings football. Yours truly, Clay Mercer here. Viking Coaches Show with ECSU football head coach Marcus Hilliard. Coach Hilliard, welcome back to the show, man. Every week you make this show happen, and to do it live, I love it because we get to talk to the people whenever they call us up. Listeners, that means we're taking your calls. You can reach us at 855-899-9787. And, Coach, you know, when you talk about matchups throughout the Northern Division, obviously it's always a battle regardless of who you play. We just played Union on Saturday. Uh, undefeated V-State is on the schedule. Lincoln coming up this Saturday. Just talk about the difficulty of playing in the Northern Division, which a lot of people really talk about. Yeah, I said it, man, before. The um, the CIAA Northern Division, man, it's, it's a gauntlet. And um, you got to be ready to play every week. Every Everybody's good in the North, man. And, um, you know, you just – you just got to be ready to play. And it's one of the toughest divisions in um, Division Two. Mm-hmm. I'm sure here um, soon um, we'll have two nationally ranked teams in our division alone. So, you know, it, it, it's a tough division to play in. Yeah, and as a coach and as players, when you, when you, when you say underdogs, like they say we were on, on Saturday, you, you kind of get yourself up for that, I'm sure. I mean, it's a chance for you to test yourself against who people think are the best in the conference or the best in the division. Oh, yeah. We we certainly look forward to that, you know, just seeing where we are, mm-hmm. you know, against a, a team like Virginia Union. And um, for me, it's a lot, you know, it's special because I was there. Mm-hmm. So um, just seeing that, but seeing that they're a national level program, man, and just – for us to see where we stack up against, um, you know, top-level talent in um, Division Two. Well, as you talk about top-level talent, Virginia Union definitely had that. Just want to touch a little bit on this past Saturday's contest over at Roebuck Stadium. Good crowd on hand for this matchup, as I figured it would be. And they talk about family reunions because of the ties on both sides. But ECSU was not ready to kind of hug with Virginia <laughs> Union in this one. It was testy from the very beginning. You call it personal, and I'm sure it's just because of your connection with Union and the time that you was there. Uh, but just talk a little bit about that and, and knowing what Union's going to bring to the table, even though you know what they're bringing, still difficult to kind of sh- kind of slow down what they're trying to do. Yeah, like I said last week, those are my brothers, man. Um, but, you know, at 1 o'clock <laughs> on Saturday, you know, it's, it's business. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, I I knew what they would bring to the table. Like I said, they're a national level program, mm-hmm. and um, Coach Parker does a great job of getting those guys ready. And you know, for us, it's just it was a time to show where we were yeah. um, as a program. And um, you know, like I said, man, my kids give it all they got, man. And even before the game, you know, it got tested. Mm-hmm. But even even if you look at that, that's how it's supposed to be. You talk a little junk before the game or whatever, but you know, it was it was about business, man. And you know, just being able for my guys to be able to get up for that game and uh, against, like I said, against Virginia Union, man, it, it made me feel pretty good. You could feel the energy at the very beginning of the game, both sides talking to each other a little bit. But after the game, it was handshakes. Great job out there, both sides. And even the players on Union side, I saw them coming over, shaking hands with you, giving you hugs. That's got to feel good that they still have that love for you and they know what you did for them while you was with that program. Yeah, man. Over half that team I recruited, man. So mm-hmm. they, you know, I, they they love me, man. I love them, man. Mm-hmm. And like I told them, I, you know, even throughout the game, you can see a lot of those guys just talking to me, man, their heads <laughs> on the sideline. Yeah, he'll, yeah, he you know. But I, I enjoy that, man. Yeah, but just yeah. seeing them, and I, I told them after the game, man, I'm just – Proud of how, you know, they've developed not only as um, football players, but just, you know, in the classroom and just making sure that they finish, you know, and that was the message to those guys. But even with the coaches, man, like we said, after the game, man, it was all love, you know. um, And, you know, again, I'm just proud of my guys, though. You you know, we fought even though despite the score, um, you, you look at it, and I told the coaches this yesterday against a national level team, you know, and we always talk about the positives. Mm-hmm. Um, it's twenty eight to twenty in the fourth quarter with eight forty one left. Yeah. You know, and I know what they have and mm-hmm. you know, how consistent they've been, you know, and they're they're a top level team. So it just shows my guys like we can compete. That's right. We can compete. But again, like we always talk about every week, man, just trying to put together that perfect game. That's correct. And and <laughs> you know, we 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 got to find a way 
not to put ourselves in a position to lose the game. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, that's what we've been preaching. That's what we'll preach um, going forward through the rest of the season. You talked about how proud you are of your guys and the way ECSU went out and fought hard. And especially in that first half, you could tell ECSU belonged on that field. And that was the beautiful thing that we were all able to watch, Whoever, everybody who came out to Roebuck Stadium. It was a good day for football. Of course, the final score does not really show what this game was all about. And we talked about that first half. The Vikings were right there with Virginia Union. ECSU down 0-14 at the half. But – you had to be pleased, as you just talked about, with the effort from your team early on. Just kind of talk a little bit, give a little spotlight on that first half, some of the positives you took from that first half, and just how you felt going into the locker room. You're only down a couple of touchdowns. Yeah, we played well. Um, you know, and I don't talk about the referees, but questionable face mask call on fourth down. Correct, um, correct. And yes. I told them, I said, man, Virginia Union doesn't need any help. Um, they're good enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're good enough. I had a feeling that's what you were saying yeah, when I was looking down there. I, I said, they don't need any help. They're good enough. Um, questionable, questionable call. Yes. Um, but you, you can't get mad about that. But, you know, we don't get that call at 7-0. Correct, half. correct. I mean, that's right. you go back and you, we, we talk about progress. Last year, remember, they took their time out. We were down 35 right. and a half. Yeah. And so um, we, we battled. We battled. And, and that's what I like to see from our guys. I mean, in the first half, it went back and forth. Uh, they scored first. But. You know, we had some opportunities, but again, um, some penalties and some some things that we can control mm -hmm. that we didn't. And we go down 14 nothing, but we never – it never was anything like, hey, we can do this. This right. is a 23rd-ranked team in the nation. Yeah. Hey, we, we, we can ball right with them. Mm -hmm. So we felt good about that. Union didn't get their first score as you just stated until late in the first quarter, but at that point – Cold blue was just as good as advertised. It was going to be a defensive battle. You figured it would be, but ECSU was right there and ready for the challenge. Yeah. Um, they, they stepped up, man. Um, you know, we, we and we talked. We would always critique the tape after, after the game. You know, we missed some tackles, of course. Yeah. Uh, they, they had the All-American, the All-World, the, um, the D2 Heisman. Correct. That's what they uh, said. <laughs> Jada Byers, man, which is my guy. Yeah. And, you know. He can make you pay when you when you don't wrap up, and which he did. Yeah. So we, you know, there's some things we got to take away and get better better with. But um, yeah, Code Blue they they came to play on Saturday. Yeah. Jada Byers, just to touch on him a little bit, player. Obviously, you recruited, you recruited for that team. But when you talk about Byers and what he's done in Division Two football, the numbers are just so gaudy. They're outstanding to look at. In the preparation leading up to Saturday's game, were there any kind of different types of schemes or anything in order to prepare for what he's going to bring to the table? Well, not just him because he, he's a tough guy to try to prepare for, just mm -hmm. kind of the offense that they run. Okay. Uh, wanted to show them some different looks. I thought I felt good, and Coach Castillo, we felt good about the game plan mm -hmm. and just some of the things that we knew uh, Coach Parker was going to try to do. Um, and, and having Jada Byers, man, he just enhances everything you want to do. You know, he can make the plays that – you know, typically don't be made, and and he he's got some shiftiness with him. Even though he's been hurt, I think against us was his first. Well, he came back the week before. He didn't play as well as we know Jay to right, play. So right. I was just wondering, really, kind of your preparation, <laughs> understanding that that's not a normal game for him, but he was just really getting back into the right, of right. Us. And I wish it would have been that against I agree. us. I said yeah. the same thing. <laughs> he would pick a week to come back and. <laughs> Be him, but, um, you know, for <laughs> for us, it was just, you know, we had a game plan, and, and that was kind of the deal. We we needed to stop the run. And they also had another good running back, number yes. nine. He, he he was pretty good as well, but we kind of knew what Jada brought to the table. So it wasn't just necessarily prepare for him. It was just preparing for the scheme that, you know, Coach Parker runs. We talk about Virginia Union. We we know their run defense is, is wonderful. I mean, they've been holding teams to really some embarrassing numbers. ECSU, I thought, had the edge as far as the passing game. I figured our wide receivers, our playmakers, were just a little bit better than theirs. Was that part of the game plan, too, to say, hey, let's see if we can go to the air, especially knowing Donovan, you know, he can throw that ball with accuracy. Yeah, they, they got a good defensive front, man. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're talking about Amani Burton and – Jackie Hilliard, and then number nine, man, he might be one of the best defensive tackles in the conference, mm -hmm. or better yet, the nation. Wow! And and so you know, I think they were number one um, in in rushing yards they, allowed. That's correct. Yes. And and so yeah, that was kind of the game plan. You know, let's let's hit them quick. Let's mm -hmm. go with our passing game. We got Quinzel. We we have Ian, your guy, Ian, man, and we got some <laughs> weapons, man. So yeah. let's try to. 
uh, uh, attack them where, you know, they really hadn't been attacked. Yeah, yeah, we felt that in the second half, especially in that third quarter. You see, as you will finally get on the board, closing it right around that seven-minute mark of the third, a 41-yard touchdown pass on quarterback Donovan Davenport to Quinzel Lockhart. We're going to be saying that a few more times in a few moments, but a PAT from Carson Hancock made the score 7-14. to 14. This is in the third quarter. Got to be feeling really good on that sideline about what's happening right now. Man, you know, it's a game. Yeah. This is a game. <laughs> Again, the 23rd ranked team in the nation. I, I'm not letting that go, man. Correct. I mean, you know, we're battling despite yeah. everything that happened in the first half. You, we're right in the game. Yeah. We're right in the game, and we – we felt good about it, man. We definitely felt good about that. Had to. I mean, again, when you look at this game, they talk about underdogs. But, again, you know that program better than pretty much anybody in the CIAA outside of the people that are in that program right now. So, again, to have that score 7-14, to 14, you figure ECSU is just going to continue to play well. Speaking of playing well, Donovan Davenport, he will go on to set a game in personal season high. 301 passing yards, a lot of yards, completing 20 of 40 passes for three touchdowns. He stepped up, played really, really well. Uh, again, that defense is something because they were able to get to him a few times, but he kept his mind in the game. He played really well for you. Talk about the effort he put out there on the field. Yeah, Donovan, man, like I said, man, short-term memory. He he, he played well. We need him to play a little better. Mm-hmm. You know, he okay. had a couple throws. Um, along with that, I'm just I, – I'm, I'm pleased with how he's playing. We just got to get him more consistent. Some of the throws we wish we could take back, some mm-hmm. of those um, interceptions he yes. threw. Now, one of them was, you know, a pop-up. Yeah, and that kind of they were, they were just in the right place. Yeah, just right place, right time, man. But um, he he is a playmaker. Mm-hmm. He is a playmaker, man. And, you know, he brings a, a, a different dimension to the offense, man. So yeah. he, he played well. Yeah. Uh, this game was, you know, close than the score show, the final score. I think people may look at the final score and say, man, ECSU, again, we're talking about third quarter here, and ECSU was still in this game. After a 95-yard touchdown catch from Lockhart a little bit later, the duo would hook up again around the nine-minute mark to make the score 20-28. to Now, this game, again, is far from over, but there was a lot that happened in between that. Just talk about how the second half had gone up to that point, and ECSU, again, still in this one, you know, going into the fourth. Yeah, they um, – I want to say it was the punt. Uh, like, so we got to stop mm-hmm. defensively. They punted and they flipped the field, man. Correct. <laughs> like, Correct. <laughs> oh, my God. They they flipped the field. So it was like we had to get out our own way. Um, We, we go three and out. Mm-hmm. Then we shank a punt. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just those things. You know what I mean? Like We talk about it. <laughs> being able to capitalize <laughs> off – the mistakes, yes. you know, and they, they did. They had a short field to get the ball on the 25. They scored. That's and, right. You know, it just – things like that for us, you know. And, and at some point, like I tell the guys, we got to keep working hard, but we got to make sure we don't make those mistakes. Yes. But despite that, we come through. And I, let me explain the 28-20 because people we like, did so. y'all mean yes. – did y'all um, miss the field goal? Well, yeah, we did, but um, we scored. Mm-hmm. And – we got a like a taunting pill. I wanted you to bring it up, so I, was just, I knew a it was coming. Penalty. That's why I let you. And it was it's unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> we got a taunting penalty, so it's like, bro, we're in the game. We could be down by seven. We get a taunting penalty that backs you up fifteen yards. Yes. So now you're on an eighteen. So now instead of a seventeen, instead of a twenty yard chip yeah. shot, it's a thirty seven. It's a and real you life field it. goal. Oh my goodness, it was just like wow. Yeah, it's a field so goal. So I. So we kick it, and, you know, I know Parker. He's like, he going to enforce that on the kickoff, man, enforce that on the extra point. Yeah. Um. So we missed that, and it was a coaching moment for me to talk to the player that uh, got the penalty, like, bro, we're here. We're here. We can't do this, man. You know, despite of what they called you or said, man, you, it's bigger than you is about the team. So just those things, man, just still got to – or having to coach the guys through situational football, man. Yeah, yeah. Situational football. A lot of the fans may be a little tired of hearing, we got to fix the mistakes. We can't continue with the penalties. But this is something you enforce in practice. It's not like it's not talked about and then it just happens on game day. You kind of work hard at this in practice. Just talk about some of the techniques that you use in practice to let the team know this mistake and this mistake and this mistake can cost us wins, which it has already this season. Conditioning. <laughs> we mm. had a full quarter rule. Um, 
they didn't pay today because we had a, a activity, but tomorrow is, is conditioning. Yeah. It's like we have to not only condition them, but we have to condition their mind. It's sort of like um, when, when you're potty training a, <laughs> yes. a, a baby. You know, they, they're going to continue to make those mistakes, but eventually they're going to grow out of that. And it's the same thing with the team, man. I know people are tired of hearing it, man, but it, it is close. It's yeah. close. And yeah. I'm I'm frustrated as well yeah. because it's like, well, let's get over this home. Yes. Like, let's <laughs> not keep saying it's close. Like, I get it. I get it, man. I hear it. I hear the fans. I'm right with y'all. Like, yeah. so it, it, it's something that we're constantly – Working, working on. Yeah. It's nothing that we're just saying. It's it's a constant thing every day uh, that that we're trying to work on. And like I told the guys after the game, eventually we're going to get over this home. Mm-hmm. But we just got to keep working. Yeah. Final score of this one: ECSU uh, setback, obviously to Virginia Union, uh, twenty to forty two was the final score. The Vikings again played really, really hard. And again, that final score, you just go back and look at the game. ECSU was in this one throughout the second half, and. You guys, if you're looking at Union, I'm sure they're kind of wiping their brow because I think they came in here probably a little surprised about what they saw on that field. Yeah. Uh, even um, the the legend, Coach Taylor, said, Coach, it's way, you know, well-coached team, yeah. way better than last year. We see the improvement. Mm-hmm. Even Parker said, yo, I see the improvement. And he, he knew we would be prepared. Mm-hmm. He knew they knew um, what they call could be a trap game Correct. for them. Um, so just, just hearing other people – and and them seeing us being um you know better mm-hmm. but again <laughs> you you want to win no more you, victories you, here, yeah. yeah no more <laughs> victories man you want to win but um i i am proud of my guys but at, at some point we just got to I get that. Be able to get over that hump. Yeah, I get that, man. And 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 the team obviously is getting better and better. Just got to get over the hump. We're still looking for that close to perfect game and that pretty much the full game. I think ECSU again. We talked about the record. It could be flipped. There's a couple of games there, obviously, including Union, where they were just tough losses. But there are several games that so we've had so far this season that should have been ECSU wins. I think everybody can see that. Uh, we got some players that really played well. Obviously, we talked about. Uh, Donovan and the way that he played, but he, the CIAA has recognized a couple of our players too. As wide receiver Quinzel Lockhart will be chosen this week as a CIAA receiver of the week. He would be the outstanding performer for the Vikings. Nine receptions, 175 receiving yards, three touchdowns in this game. Uh, milestone for him that 95 yard touchdown pass where he was able to kind of break away and all he saw was just the end zone and he just made his way there uh, they call it the longest reception in ECSU program history you've got history with, with this do you recall during your playing time somebody is, is that is that true or do we need to contact our SID to make sure this is correct I, I would contact the SID I, <laughs> it may well be <laughs> I can remember though in 2006 okay. we needed to probably go back. There you go. You know, and not not when I played, but we I've coached some guys and I'm gonna say, uh, gotcha. You know, but it's still um, a I'm great run. Yeah, no still, question about no it. No question. And I'm proud of Quinzel of how he's just come and stepped up to the plate. Yes. You know, and um, hands down, he's he's the best receiver on our team, mm-hmm. and you know he he's out there, he's making plays, man. So just glad, you know. His hard work didn't go unnoticed yeah. with, the, with the CIAA this week. Yeah, congratulations to Quinzel Lockhart. Also, Food Line linebacker of the week, Devon Grant, a senior for the Mighty Vikings. He uh, led the game with tackles, had a game high 11 tackles himself in this contest. You love to see that. Because that defense, uh, again, Code Blue was real, and he's a major part of that. Yeah, and it was special for him. You know, he's a transfer from Virginia. Yes. Um, you know, recruited him. To go to Union, now he's back with me, man. Mm-hmm. So it was real special for him, man. Yeah. He played – he might have played every snap, mm-hmm. defensive snap, and on every special team. So, you know, for him to do that, he, he gave it up, man, and just happy to see that his hard work didn't go unnoticed, man. And it, it was – it was special for him just to see his old teammates and be able to ball like he did. Yeah, that, that personal feel when you get somebody like that, just like it is with you. But he came out there and played really well. So congratulations to both of those players. We got a big one coming up on Saturday as the Mighty Vikings will take that trip to Pennsylvania. It, it, it's not a short trip, but they're going to go out there and try to get themselves a win. We'll talk about that game, and we'll also give some kudos to our volleyball team in just a few moments. It's Viking Coaches Show on WRVS 89.9. 
Do you have a question or comment for Coach Hilliard? Call into the show, 855-899-WRVS. Hi, it's Rachel Martin with NPR's Morning Edition. If you happen to get a new car over the weekend or you're planning to get one soon and you're wondering what to do with the old one, you could try to sell it if you've got the time. Or you could simply call this station and arrange to have it picked up and sold with proceeds going to support your favorite programs. Get started today. Call 866-789-8627 and find us online at ecsu.edu slash WRVS. Hi, I'm Amine. Sometimes starting a conversation with a friend about mental health can feel awkward, but your support can make a huge difference. You know your friends best, so if you feel like something's wrong, trust your instinct and reach out. Learn how to start the conversation at SeizeTheAwkward.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council, the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, and the Jed Foundation. From the football field to the radio, this is Viking Coaches Show on WRVS 89.9. ECSU, with all the success on the court, the volleyball team it did very well last week. Got to give them a little bit of love. They played their pink game. It's called Dig in Pink as they swept Bowie State back on October 5th, 3-0. And then this past Sunday, October 8th, they defeated Lincoln at Lincoln with another sweep 3-0. And they're moving into next weekend, uh, this weekend. They got a big game coming up. It's the CIAA Roundup. They'll be playing a lot of games here at the Vaughn Center. If you love volleyball, we want you here supporting the Vikings as they take on Winston-Salem State. They'll take on Livingstone, and they'll take on several other CIAA teams in the CIAA Roundup. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. It all begins at 8 a.m. this Saturday morning over at the Vaughn Center. Of course, you could get more details online at ecsuvikings.com. And speaking of Lincoln, the Mighty Vikings are heading into Pennsylvania to take on the Lions. And when you look at what Lincoln has been able to do, of course, they're at the 500 mark. I, obviously, we talk about ECSU. I feel like we should be over 500 right now, but we can get more into that in a few moments. But when you look at what Lincoln has been able to do, they're coming off a 52-44 victory over Bluefield State. The numbers are gaudy. I've been using that word a lot here. 516 total yards by the team, but they also gave up 417 yards to Bluefield State. Obviously, Bluefield State, no disrespect to them, but they're no ECSU, and the Vikings are going to go in there ready to play. Talk a little bit about what we can expect from Lincoln, as I already know what we can expect from our hungry Vikings. Yeah, uh, Lincoln, um, they have a great quarterback, man. Uh, I think he may be the best quarterback in wow. in, the, in the conference. Wow. You know, um, and, and this, he's good. Mm-hmm. He, he's good. He, he's a dual-threat guy. He can run. It makes some plays with his feet, and you know he has number nineteen, who's also leading the conference mm-hmm. in um, in receiving yards, man. So uh, they they have a good one two punch, and you know they they're gonna come ready. It's their homecoming. Yes. And I told the guys like we talked earlier, we we didn't get a chance to win our homecoming, so let's go ahead and get us a homecoming homecoming victory. But uh, they they're gonna be ready. They're gonna be up to the challenge, and we will too. Yeah. We're we're hungry. I told you after every. Every time or every week you, you get a loss, you you, you anxious mm-hmm. and you want to get, get that off you, man, and you're ready to play the next game. So we'll, we'll be ready. Um, definitely, you know, 500 or whatever yards. <laughs> um, you know, just cold blue, just not going for that. Yeah. But it, it'll be a good game. Yeah. And um, just want us to go out and play penalty-free football, man, mm-hmm. you know, and not – have any self-inflicted wounds. And I know I keep saying that every week, but if we're able to do that, I feel good about our chances. Going back to homecoming, uh, we almost put together a complete game there and just the fourth quarter didn't go the way we wanted it to go. Combine that to what we saw in the first half against obviously what you say, one of the nation's top D2 teams. Uh, You put that together, it feels like that's the complete game. And if you bring that to Pennsylvania on Saturday, I don't see how the Vikings walk out of there without a win. Yeah, we'll we'll be good. I I feel good about our chances. If we're able to do those things, like I said, we'll we'll be fine. We'll we'll, we'll be fine. But, you know, we we have to do it. (laughs) We have to do what we talk about it, but we have to be about it. And that's the message to the guys. Um, Even today, um, they're good. Like I said, the energy of our guys, Mm -hmm. you know, they're still locked in because of um, they know we're, we're close. Mm-hmm. They know it. They know it, man. It's just getting us over that edge. And so it, if we're able to play like that, 
I feel good about our chances. Yeah, big game coming up in Pennsylvania. It's one of the longest trips the Vikings take any year, so they're going to take that trip up to Pennsylvania. And and obviously, it is a long trip. Do you do anything differently with these long trips? Sometimes you take a trip to Raleigh or you take a trip, but you're going up to Pennsylvania. This is this is an interesting trip, no no question. Yeah, we we try to leave a little bit earlier. Okay. You know, um, I, I want the guys to be relaxed as possible. The, the thing about this trip, we'll do everything on the front end, so we'll have our – walk through in the morning and we'll leave. Of course, you know how traffic goes and everything. And, you know, we'll get to the hotel a little earlier just so they can relax and just kind of take in everything. And then about 630 mm-hmm. on that Friday, we'll, we'll go through our routine. So really nothing, nothing um, would change as far as our itinerary. Um, I, honestly, I like it because, you know, um, I know the guys. I know where they are. Mm-hmm. We have them locked in here on the every every uh, away game. So, you know, and I can control what they're eating. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, just That's everything important. about the trip. You know, <laughs> so I actually like the away games, man, because we can we have more control of everything. So, but nothing would really change for us as far as um, how we prepare for the game. I know how we feel when it's the homecoming game. I know how the players felt. The energy is there. You got the home crowd. But now you have a chance to go in here and spoil their homecoming. That's got to make the players feel pretty good, too, when you can step out there and you see all their alumni and their fans and they're all raw, raw. But when that final score hits and ECSU comes away with a win, that's got to make the players feel good. Yeah, and, and this is not the first time I don't think Lincoln had us for homecoming. I don't think so. You yeah, know, so we've correct. had it before and we spoiled it before and we look to do that again. Yeah. Um, but it, it's exciting for us as well, mm-hmm. you know, just homecoming, man. You know the feel. They have all the festivities, all the people, and – you know, for us, like I told the guys, man, let's let's get our homecoming back. Yeah, it's, it's our homecoming. That's the message, and it's homecoming for us. That's right. That's right. It's a great chance to spoil it coming up this Saturday against Lincoln in Pennsylvania. Game time set for 1 p.m. And if you want to check this game out, you want to watch it, just go to the CIAA Sports Network, and you can support the Vikings that way. Coach, thank you so much for making this show happen. And I tell you what, good luck to you this Saturday. I expect the Vikings to walk away with a win. And when we come in here on Monday, we're going to have a lot to talk about. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely, man, to get ready and just, um, you know, ready to get back at it, man. Just ready to get back at it. And, you know, like I said, we play how we're supposed to play. We'll, we'll be fine. Yeah, I think it's going to be a great opportunity, especially with the Vikings being on the road where your mind is just focused on the game. So we're looking forward to it. Coach, thank you so much for making this happen. Listeners, if you missed out on any parts of tonight's show or you want to catch up on past shows, just go to the WRVS 89.9 YouTube channel and listen anytime. For Coach Hilliard, I'm Clay Mercer. Thank you all for joining us. We'll see you next week here on Viking Coaches Show on WRVS 89.9.